Bonjour, bonjour, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about men's fragrances. So, for that, I took my dad's uh, fragrance collection today. So, uh, I'm going to review them and tell me tell you what I think about them, uh, even though I gifted um, mainly all of them, I think, to my dad. So, I do really like them. But uh, let me tell you more about them. So the first one in his collection, which is quite uh, the recent one that I've been uh, offering to him, is Bleu Pure Parfum uh, from Chanel. But this one is the new interpretation of the classic and iconic Bleu. And this is uh, a difference with the other one is this one is much more woody we have more cedar sandalwood accord to it so it's much more intense i would say like uh, it's like uh, something more deeper something more mysterious seductive as well than the other one the other one gave like a bit like a slightly freshness with a touch of grapefruit but this one much more intense much more deeper it's also the first uh, ever uh, pure parfum from Chanel. So you've got EDT, Eau de Parfum, and Pure Parfum. And this one is actually really amazing for its longevity uh, as it's a pure parfum. So it's not always like related. It's not because it's parfum that's going to be stronger. It means the trail is going to be more intense in woods, but usually woods stay a bit more longer. So it's quite nice. And this is. Um, Olivier Paul's recreation because uh, his dad, Jacques, has been creating the bleu and he's been uh, reinterpreted it. I think uh, Olivier is a master in uh, reinterpretation. He reinterpreted uh, uh, Gabriel from Chanel. He reinterpreted number five as well. And uh, I think he's such a knowledgeable man in terms of modern fragrances. Uh, he's been also doing other brands that were like bestsellers, so I think you know what he's doing. So that's the new one, which I really like. So I think for fall, that can be a nice choice. And uh, yeah, so that was the first one. Um, next one from my dad's fragrances, we're gonna go through another Chanel. How surprising! Da -da -da. So this is Platinum Egoist from Chanel. Um, this one uh, so is meant by, by uh, Olivier Paul's dad, which is Jacques. Uh, he's been doing so many fragrances for Chanel, so many like uh, masterpieces as well. He's such a genius in terms like, of ingredients, uh, rarity of the ingredient and um, the composition of the fragrance are already like they're simple but efficient all the time. Uh, Platinum Egoist is a fougère type of fragrance, so if you don't know what's a fougère, it's uh, basically uh, something that is created by a few notes, geranium, lavender, and uh, moss. Yeah, moss, moss, that's it. So that's created a fougère fragrances. To give you an idea, you've got Rive Gauche from Saint Laurent, that is a fougère. Um, you also got uh, something like, um, what is a fougère? Uh, Eau de Minté from Diptyque very recently. I think I'm gonna close this window because it's too much time in my face. Uh, so yeah, Platinum Egoist is a fougère. So fougère scent smell like an aftershave. So nearly like, a, do you know, this clean freshness, very aromatic, soothing with a touch of lavender. Um, it's not my favorite, uh, those kind of fragrance because I feel they've been recreated so much. Like uh, there's so many different like popular and uh, kind of more cheaper fragrance that been copying fougère fragrance. So I'm a bit bored of that really, but if you're looking like, this one is pretty exceptional as a fougère and I would re always recommend it. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for something quite fresh but very different, this can be a nice choice and it's always very really elegant. So yeah, that's yeah. So, we've got one iconic fragrance here and it's called Eau Sauvage from Dio. So this is really cute, it comes in a little coiffure like this and inside there's a, a little uh, Eau Sauvage and you've got the shower gel to go with it, so this is pretty cute. Um, and I think uh, there's some notes in there, what does it say? Yeah, so it's been created in 1966 and it was the first fragrance uh, masculine for uh, for 
Dior, which uh, I think is amazing. Every time I'm thinking of Eau Sauvage, I'm thinking of the advertising with Alain Delon. You know this one, oh my god. <gasps> anyway, uh, but yeah, I'm always thinking of that. So very vintage kind of scent. Um, it's part of the family of fresh scents, but you can definitely recognize Eau Sauvage from any kind of freshness because it's got that bitterness to the fragrance, which is very iconic for me. It. Um, it's very aromatic. Um, yeah, there's some spice, uh, there's some uh, coriander as well as I remember, was it, yeah, rosemary, coriander, patchouli, musk, amber, lemon, of course it's more turned into the lemon, but there's so many like little ingredients that are changing this fresh scent to a very much more deeper lemony citrus kind of scent. Um, there's some orris as well and some um, uh, rose, jasmine, which is very rare actually in men fragrances and it gives not a flowery note to the fragrance but something very powdery and I think it's pretty amazing for a fragrance so um, I mean for summertime, even for fall like uh, because it's quite spicy I think it's really nice on the skin so yeah one of my favorites. So that's uh, another one for my dad and then um, talking uh, about kind of fresh scent, eau de cologne kind of scent, let me introduce you to one of the brands I really like for men. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's there. I'm hiding the scent. Where is it? Oh, it's there. This is Aqua di Parma Colonia. Uh, this is one of our classic from uh, Aqua di Parma. Uh, if you know Classico de Cologne, very fresh, citrusy, very clean kind of scent. Um, this is such an iconic one, I would say. Uh, it's a timeless of the Cologne, very modernized by uh, oh God, by um, Aqua di Parma. It's a bit more spicy. But anyway, I'm going to talk about Eau de Cologne in another video because there's so many things to say historically about Eau de Cologne that I want to talk about that next time. So this one we're going to leave it apart, but as we introduce Aqua di Parma, let me introduce you to this one. <gasps> Oopsie! Um, this is Aqua di Parma and this is called Cedro di Taormina. So, um, it's part of the collection called Blue Mediterranean and um, they've got a few fragrances like this in Aqua di Parma, they're part of the fresher, um, more fruity kind of scent and um, each one of them represents a fruit and it make like a note to this fruit so this is Cedro for this one but you've got Mandolo, you've got Fico, Fico is my favourite I have to say, thick fragrances Tell me which one is your favorite in the comments, but for me, Fico, amazing. But what we have in here is Cedro. So Cedro is a bit more woody, uh, as uh, Cedro is mainly like, kind of like a wood, a citrus kind of scent. Um, so yeah, it's been inspired by the Mediterranean coast, which you can really feel. It's a warm, fresh kind of scent. Um, when I smell it, yeah, I smell something very masculine, I have to say, for Cedro, because it's a bit more woody. I smell like uh, something with a spectacular landscape, um, the seaside, something rich. I, I feel the, the Sicily, yeah, Sicily, the volcanoes of Sicily, things like that. Um, it smells fiery, but windy at the same time. See that this kind of emotion, the fresh, but vivid, um, fiery, like I said. So this is a really nice fragrance for uh, summer, but I would say every time that you feel like a bit like more warmer and you want something refreshing, this can be nice. And it's got a massive personality. There's so many fragrances that are fresh, but this got like really personality for me. And um, Aqua di Parma is such a beautiful brand. They're doing scents that are you can feel the quality of the scent behind that, so that's really, really a nice one. Emotional connection uh, linked to this one is called Mont Blanc 
And that's the intense one. Uh, so Mont Blanc Legend, uh, but the intense version. I used to love the Legend, but um, it's it's very, it's nice, but I don't feel anything like amazing from it. But this, this is stunning. So um, I used to work for different brands before, and uh, I've worked for Interparfum, and that's the group that is taking care of um, Mont Blanc fragrances. So I had actually to go to Sephora and to sell those fragrances and that was so good to sell them because I love the fragrance so I was just selling it to every man because I was like you need to try this uh, but yeah it's just oh I still I still love it so much so for me this represents a man that is kind of a teddy bear you want to cuddle him <laughs> very masculine but like a teddy bear um, or you know like you're next to the chimney with a glass of red wine and that that's what it smells for me it's so elegant so what is nice with those fragrance and I think that's what I prefer in a men's fragrance is it's quite warm very woody but there's a scent nearly vanilla like inside very oriental um, there's some tone cabin in there, so the tone cabin is one of my favorite ingredients when it comes to mint fragrance because it's nearly like vanilla like and I feel it's so sexy. Like, um, I don't know, I just love that. It's very like a uh, charming, you, you want you want to come next to this, definitely. Uh, but yeah, so it's been created by Oliver, Olivier Pecheux. Uh, if you don't know him, uh, that's him that's been doing a lot of fragrance that we know. Uh, he's been doing some Yves uh, Saint Laurent, I think, yeah? He's been doing some Dior, Higher Energy from Dior, quite a vintage one. Uh, what he's been doing, uh, we had some Balmain, Balmain Pouvant, that was really good. And uh, what he's been doing, let me see, I've done some notes. Oh yeah, Eau d'Essence from Dintic, really nice as well. We had Versace Eros. And another one from Mont Blanc that was the Explorer, which um, I know usually like people prefer uh, Explorer to uh, Mont, uh, Legend, but Legend is less, much better, guys. Um, and he's been doing also one million for Paco Rabanne. Not saying anything. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that's from Olivier Pecheux and I think um, he's such a great perfumer and um, this, this is a beautiful scent, like it's much more warmer, very oriental. If you do like oriental scent, you're gonna love this one for sure. Like, have a try next time and uh, tell me what you think or if you didn't, did smell it before, tell me what you think about it. But for me, it's just, it's just a masterpiece really. And uh, do you know, sometimes I prefer original fragrances than interpretation and uh, I actually really prefer this one uh, as the classic. So I will recommend you to have a try and uh, tell me what you think. And uh, the last one from the collection is, I'm not going to talk a lot about it because um, it's again a Chanel. Um, this is a Chanel Allure Classic um, from uh, Chanel, so it's been created by Jacques Poge again. If you're looking for a fragrance, you're doing a gift, for example, and you don't know what the person is wearing, go for that. That's an easy one. Uh, if you're sure that you're not making a mistake, it's still, it's been created like earlier on, but it still smells quite modern. It's a perfect balance between woody, citrusy, and it's not too light, but not too heavy. I think it can go to any kind of man and that's why I really like this fragrance. It's timeless and easy but beautiful. I mean easy to wear doesn't mean that it's, it's uh, something that is quite is bad. On the contrary for this one it means that it's a perfect balance. So I would definitely recommend you to wear that. So yeah that's pretty a lot now. So we had Aqua di Parma fragrances uh, Bleu de Chanel in Pure Parfum, uh, Platinum Egoist and Mont Blanc and Au Sauvage and if I had to choose, um, I've been personally wearing a lot the new Bleu, I love it on myself 
the Aqua di Parma, uh, the Colonia, and the other one I'm wearing a lot as well. I think it's really nice for summer. Uh, Platinum Egoist is too masculine for me, so uh, this aftershave, as I said, I wouldn't wear it. Um, I love the Mont Blanc. The Mont Blanc, I love it. I, I personally, maybe wouldn't wear it too much on myself, but on a man, oh guys, I love it. Uh, Eau Sauvage has been wearing that a lot as well. Um, it's timeless. Uh, I think in 10 or 20 years we will still wear Eau Sauvage. Uh, so yeah, that's the perfume of my dad. Tell me what you think about his collection. I think he's got like um, different family to play with and uh, yeah, really like that. Tell me what you think. And that's it for this week and uh, I'm pretty glad during the holiday that I'm doing a bit more videos and um, and yeah tell me if you have any ideas for a new video that you want me to do uh, I'm pretty glad uh, to follow your ideas um, please like subscribe and comment the video if you can it would be very appreciated as I'm just started the channel I would really love you to support me and uh, thank you so much for the one that are watching me already or follow me on Instagram um, 